Uh, let us pray, uh, then we begin our lesson. Uh, Father, we want to thank Thee for this class. Lord, may Thy Spirit come and lead and guide us, illumine us as we consider Thy Word. This I ask and pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 to 24, the making of a Christian, part 1. Uh, reading responsively, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23 in unison. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24 together. And that ye put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. We have said <clears throat> uh, from the beginning uh, of this study, the definition of the church that it is a people chosen by the Father, purchased by the Son, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. This is the big picture, the big idea that gives us the origin of the church that I hope we will remember. But precisely, what does it mean to say we are chosen by the Father, purchased by the Son, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Well, we began this book by elaborating that the church is firstly a privileged people separated from sin unto holiness. That is what it means to be chosen by the Father. We are separated from sin unto holiness. And secondly, we said that we are a purchased people. We are purchased by the Son. What does it mean? Well, we are a people that is in intimate fellowship with the living and true God. Now, based on these two thoughts, uh, we want to frame uh, our study in this section of uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 17, to all the way to the end of the chapter. What does it mean to be uh, people who have been separated from sin to holiness. So he gave us the broad picture. Now he's going into the detail of how uh, the sanctified of child of God will look like so that we will know right, the kind of uh, character that reflect the image of God in our lives. So the Lord wants us to see and this will form for us the introduction, uh, the basis uh, by which uh, Paul will elaborate what it means to be a holy and living testimony for our God. Right? A privileged people separated from sin unto holiness. Uh, I've used the phrase, a changed man. A changed man. God had created you are new in Christ Jesus. When you have received Jesus Christ by faith, repent of your sins by faith, draw, try to draw close to Jesus, well, God has done something in your life, something mysterious, something supernatural, something that, is, that has taken place inside you. He has created a new man out of you. You are a new creature, new creation out of that God had made, right? a changed man. You are no longer 
who you were. I remember when, after coming to know God, I was uh, listening to the music of the world and following them year by year um, without fail, many years. But after coming to know God, well, this music seemed to have lost its savour and taste. Right? I cannot explain to you uh, how, why, but I just have no interest for them. And so there is a change. God had changed you right, from inside. And you see, this is what the spiritual transformation is about. You see, God creating a new man out of us. And this is the power of God to salvation, right? to, to cause you to know God, to fear God. You know, you, you don't dare to play, play, as it were, huh? to mind, mind with God. No. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see that God is really, you know, will come after us, you know. And, you know, you, 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 you know that God had if effected a change in our life. We know who He is. Right? He's a loving God. At the same time, He's a consuming fire. And so this is the thought that we want to uh, see here. Right? The changed man that Paul is saying to us. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds. Well, you have been... Change. God has changed you from the inside. Right? This new man in Christ is created after holiness and must continue to live a life separated from sin unto holiness. And you see that this is all by the grace of God, you see. God's favour come upon you once you are saved. Sometimes, you know, we don't know how we ought to live our lives. Right? We go about right, living our life the way we think is, is okay. But you see that we are not alone anymore when we live this Christian life. But God is there to superintend over our lives, to guide us, even those times when we are lost, when we you know, would stray away from Him. Right? He is there to guide us, to show us. Right? And that is a description that Paul wants us to see concerning the new man. So he says, Therefore, I say, and testify in the Lord. Right? He's testifying because, well, he himself was a changed man. Okay? God changed him. Right? It was a radical change for the Apostle Paul. Right? He was a persecutor, right? enemy, you know. You know what is an enemy? Right? Enemy means, you know, you will fight to the bitter end. Right? But now, what happens? God has changed him. How did that come about? Well, only by the power of God. And what did God do? Well, in order to effect a change, you see that God effect the mind. Right? The mind has a new set of values that it pursues. Okay? The sensual music of the world becomes tasteless. Right? You know and you don't feel after it. Okay? God create in you holiness. And that's something that you cannot explain. I remember before my salvation, uh, I was staying in the hostels, you know, and I had my neighbour, who was my classmates from college days, and his friends from the army, Christians, and they were speaking about holiness. 
Right? For the first time, I heard what is holiness, but I don't understand what is holiness. I know. Yeah. And you, you, you can attest to the change later on. You see? Because when God effects the change, right, that change is irreversible. If it's a true change, you'll find that it will be an irreversible change. God had created something anew within you. Okay? And it's powerful. It cannot be revoked, you know, because it's the power of God that effect that change. And so Paul says uh, that there is a stark contrast between who you are before right? and who and the changed man now. Okay? The changed man is created in holiness and it's not the old man. Okay? And the word walk describes a man's life, the way he lives. Right? So the Gentile, the word Gentile is a description of the of unregenerate men, right? those who do not know God in their lives. And the change that is effected is that he lives not in the vanity of the mind. Okay? The word vanity means devoid of truth and appropriateness. I find Dr. D.A. Wade's uh, definition very good. Perverseness, depravity, frailty. Right? If you look at the dictionary meaning, uh, you look at the lexicon, uh, free but lexicon, they will tell you. Right? It means nonsense, nothingness, emptiness, right? something futile, frustrating, purposelessness. So the mind of the unregenerate is moving headlong to destruction. Right? This is the description of life under the sun that Solomon speaks of in the book of Ecclesiastes, a godless life. When you don't have God with you, okay, you find that your mind is without bearing, okay, uncontrolled, or you know, lost. And it's a sad state, you see. And you can attest to it after God has saved you. You can tell the difference. You can see the difference between what life was before that and what life is now. So it's a sad state to be lost without God and to choose to reject and even to mock God's offer of salvation. What did Jesus say when he was on the cross? When the people shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see that the behavior, certain times you find it cannot be explained. And for our Lord, you know, <laughs> He's the one who made them. He's the one who gave them all that they have and possess. And imagine they, you know, uh, turning around and want to crucify him, the, the one who is sustaining their life. What madness, right? What madness, you may say. But what did Jesus say? You see here the heart of the Father, heart of the, the, our Lord. Father, he committed the matter to the Lord. Forgive them for they know not what they do. It's a sad state, isn't it? To have the mind still uh, uh, living in that vanity. Right? Cannot see, cannot fathom, cannot feel the right from the left. It's a very sad thing. And when you see it, you are, you are sad. Right? And this was, you know, what... Our Lord said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And some of them even mocked. Right? They said, he saved others, 
Let him save himself. If he be the Christ, chosen of God, come down from the cross. Uh, you see, the Lord, through the Apostle Paul, uh, wants to bring to us, uh, to help us to see that the new man in Christ must abstain and not be influenced to go back to the old ways of sin. Okay? He separates himself from the ungodly friends of the past that brought him much misery. Okay? That's why, you see, after you come to know God, uh, you'll find that, you know, oftentimes you have to part company right, with the ungodly friends that, 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 you, that you have. There are ways, you know, that, you know, is untendable, cannot. Of course, on the one hand, you want to reach out to them, you want to share with them, but on the other hand, you find that, you know, you can't uh, indulge with them because they just simply won't listen. You can't indulge with them. And it's better that we be separated. That's what the psalmist says uh, in Psalm 1. He says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Right? He walketh not in the counsel. What is the counsel? Counsel is something that advice, right? Uh, and it affects what? Your mind. So the first attack would come upon your mind. Do this and not this. Right? The serpent came and said to Adam and Eve, what did he say? Thou shalt not surely die. When the Lord says, thou shalt surely die. So if they remember a lie, what happens? Well, it's destruction. So the influence will come. Affecting first the mind. Okay, and therefore, we have to guard our mind. We have to guard the inputs that come into our mind, right, that walketh not. So we have to know who we would walk with, spend time with, right? how you know, their counsel right, uh, is ungodly. And how do you know? Well, you find... You'll find that as you, you know, grow and mature in the Lord, right, you take time to study God's Word, God's law, God's wisdom comes into your heart, comes into your mind to change and renew you and instruct you so that, you know, you would be a person blessed of God. Right? So walk not in the counsel or stand the next step. After your mind is influenced, what will you do? You will stand with them. Okay? You will stand. Right? Meaning that you, know, you become a, a part of them. Right? You become their, 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 their gang, as it were. You know? that, what else? And seated in the seat of the scornful. Seat means that you, know, you are comfortable with it. Right? You want to remain like that, huh? See, you see, the, the way the scripture is framed is so beautiful and it's so right, so appropriate, it's so uh, spot on. Okay? And, and, and that's where, you know, when we take time to study, we would prosper. Right? Instead of going after this company, we would be willing to take time to study God's word, take time to Imbibe the word of God, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaves shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall, what? Perish. So scary, isn't it? Right? Begin with blessing. And what is the last word there? Perish. You see? So what Paul is saying here is that meddle not with the old life. 
meddle not with the old things. Right? The godly prosper, the ungodly perish. So a choice to choose the prosperity of the soul that the Christian makes to live a holy life looking to God's word for guidance and strength. So you see that, how do you identify the unregenerate? They covered after the things of this world. Covetousness, money, power, position. Right? Because of greed, because of pride, right? you, you find that, you know, there is that, that unmortified affection Right? The discontented heart, rest insecure, right? covets after the things of this world to give a sense of security, to find that it truly, finally disappoints. And this is the Singapore problem. Right? This is the Singapore problem. And it is manifesting itself today very seriously. In the 1987 financial crisis uh, called Black Monday, the stock exchange tumbled. Many lost their hard-earned savings who speculated in stocks and shares and multiple properties. Then in 1997, financial crisis dubbed the Asian financial crisis, currency crisis, right, saw many lost their life savings, properties, broken families. And in the financial crisis of 2007, called the subprime crisis that led to the hard times of 2008, 2009, saw greed reaching its feverish euphoria. And now we are in 20. 17. And many of the unbelievers have jumped on the financial bandwagon for prosperity in the vanity of their mind to find financial security through wanton speculation. Now, when I say wanton speculation, uh, now, when these people go about buying properties uh, and going into all these things, uh, they think that they have been very prudent, you know. They have made their sums, they have calculated, they have done all these things. But the bottom line is that they were exposing themselves beyond their means and they did not see the danger. And that is the covetous mind, you see. The mind that, that is blinded with greed. That's why, you know, Paul says, Idolatry is covetousness. So idolatry is, you know, not just what we make with our hands, you know, but a covetous heart, a covetous nature that we must get rid of, ask God to, to mortify, put to death in our heart. Very, very serious. That covetousness right? and... Has the bubble not burst before? Will it not burst again? Oh, we are in 2017. And if you put the fillers to the ground, right, you already see there are casualties already. People are down. And as we have seen in the last 20 years, right, those if you have one person in trouble, Right. You find it so tough to rescue, so tough. Not that you don't want to help, you want to help. But usually, the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, situation is so great, so difficult. Right. We, we have those whom you know, God has saved, and it took them many years, many years to recover. Know, to the debt and to repay the debts again, monthly having to work and to repay. Some never recovered. 
very serious. And what is the root cause? Well, 1 Timothy 6, Paul says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drawn men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And while some covetous after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Is the Christian spared? Well, Paul is saying, to the Christian, be careful. Don't go back to the old way again. Are there not those who have overexposed themselves by taking up large loans through multiple property investments and are still drunken and cannot get out? Very serious. We have seen those before. No rest, no peace in the heart. You know, when you loan, you are expected to pay high interest rates. And interest rates can go up to 40%, 50%. And when you are being chased, right, the debt usually is sold to a collector's company. And the collector's company will come after. Letter after letter after letter. And the person who is either you declare yourself bankrupt or you have to find a way out. And most of the time, those who commit themselves, right, they have made some gains, but they dumb themselves, you know, their savings, their whatever they have. Somehow they are blinded to the danger before them. And so sad, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, you see that uh, for the Christian, right, we have a different mindset. Right? The Lord teaches us how we must be securely trusting in the Lord to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and know that the Lord will not forsake us, but He will take care of us. So what do we need in the new Man, faith and contentment. Faith to trust God that He will take care of you. And contentment to know that, you know, ha, don't, don't go after it. You're tempted to go after it. Right? There's a carrot dangling before you and you're tempted to chase after it. But you restrain yourself and say, no, I must not. Right, so for the unbelievers, without the guidance of God's word, succumbing to the insecurity of a life without God's assurance, may choose to overexpose themselves with debt through imprudent investments that would pierce themselves through with many sorrows. And he said, uh, recently I've uh, met with friends and, and people who are, you know, the all around. And the, the general sentiment is that many are involved and deeply involved and they can't get out and they have not, they have been warned four years, five years ago, but they just could not get out, cannot get out. And, you know, it's getting a bit too late. Just like the frog, you know, burning under the flame of boiling water or cold water to boiling, you know, because of its nature, right, the skin cannot feel the heat until, you know, it's boiling already, it get burned up, get, get cooked. Too late. So here Paul is saying, Right, that be careful, be careful. Right, uh, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness 
of their heart, having been darkened in the mind, right? having the understanding darkened. Right? You see that when God is forced out of the mind, the mind is full of darkness, a life devoid of holiness. Right? The word there, the word alienated, right? it means to be shut off of one's fellowship and intimacy. Right? The word Blindness uh, describes a covering of a callous. Uh, it's a hardening. When the mind is hardened, it cannot see. You know, just like when you, you know, you 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 you, you expose yourself uh, uh, to to uh, to work. You know, and you have been using with your hands all the time. After a while, you see that you know there are bruises that. Uh, 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 of, of, of your sick skin begin to tear, you know, your skin begin to form bubbles, you know, and after that, you know, you form a, a layer of skin over it, and somehow, you know, it's different now, it's harder, cannot feel. Right? It is that kind of a situation, okay, where, we, you know, Paul says that you have been delivered already, okay, don't let it affect you anymore. That's why the psalmist had to warn. Paul had to warn, when we walk in the light, we walk in obedience to his word, we find strength to live life. Even if you do not have, you know, uh, you know, it is said in the Proverbs uh, that even in the poor man's house, you know, you go to a poor man's house, he will, you, you will be able to find something that he, he can give it to you, you know. Although he's a poor man, And this is the contented Christian. You see, God wants us to live that kind of a life. So if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all sin. So when we walk in the light, we walk in obedience to His word. There is a sublime joy that is in our hearts. You see, uh, we are studying Psalm 119 and we just started studying. You know, you see how the psalmist, uh, the life of the psalmist, so wonderful. When he invite God's word in your heart, right, we said how it cleanses, uh, how you know, it's able to counsel you, how it's able to strengthen you, how it's able to establish you. Then you see, as you live the life with God, inviting God's word in your heart, seeking these things, you see that God does many things for you. you know? He molds you. He, when you are way upward, He chastises you. Right? He loves you. He guides you. He shows you the way. He does all these things. And you, you see that you know, you're not alone. God is with you. Right? So He's saying here that do not go back to that life. You know what it is. Right? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ignorance. Why ignorance? No, you shouldn't be ignorant anymore. Right? Because God gives you the wisdom of His Word. You study the life of Solomon. Right? When he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, he tells you, what are those things you don't touch? Right? We spent 41 messages on that. What are the things that we don't touch? And if we fail to take heed, then we get burned, isn't it? Then we get hurt. Who gets hurt? We get hurt. Is it not painful? You think Jesus Christ on the cross, He bears the sin, He gets hurt? Of course, He is grieved. But ultimately, who are those who are really hurt? Those who reject Him. You see. Verse 19, Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Right? The phrase past feeling means cease to feel pain. Uh, it's as if you know you have been uh, 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 you have been given an injection 
right, to numb your uh, senses. Right? You know, you, you go for certain uh, procedures and you want to be uh, relieved of pain, right? you, you take these anesthetics. Uh, you take an injection and they pump in you know, the liquid into your body. And after a while, you don't feel it anymore. You don't feel, you don't feel your, the, any sensation of your body anymore. So when pain comes, you don't, you don't feel the pain. Right? So here he's saying to us that you be careful. Right? Be careful. Who, being past feeling, have given over unto lasciviousness. Right? What is the meaning of the word lasciviousness? Unbridled lust excess, licentiousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shamelessness, indolence. Right? To work out all uncleanness with greediness. Right? This word greediness, uh, to have a desire for more, to have a desire to cover after the things that doesn't belong to you. Right? It's a disease which Paul calls it idolatry. Do not do not, you know, underestimate its power. That's why you see, you know, the queue uh, <laughs> for lottery uh, is always very long, right? But, you know, people are willing to queue, people are willing to stick, right? Because they want that gain, you know, and it can disguise itself right, in various ways in our lives and the Lord tells us that be careful right? see the root cause what's the problem right? it has to be treated okay? um, living with contentment is God's wisdom for protecting his people from the perils of financial bankruptcy if a financial crisis were to hit Singapore this year Will we be prepared for it? Now, this we wrote about five, six years ago. All right. Unfortunately, Singapore is importing this spend first, pay later, or spend first, earn later mentality that has ruined the Western world. Okay. If you read... You know, the advertisement, no? there was one bank that offered a 32-inch flat-screen TV for taking a credit line that gives four months' salary. Right? Credit card companies dangle a cash offer, $50 to tempt customers to take up the credit card with two years' free subscription. Right? The enticement is very real, very attractive. And here is the scenario. Uh, given in the, uh, the MAS website uh, to warn, I do not know if it's still there, but a number of years ago, this was the example that they gave about against unrestrained spending and the snare of financial debt. Uh, Mr. Michael Tan was a successful manager with an MNC drawing a monthly salary of $10,000. When Mr. Tan was promoted in 1999, he upgraded to a bigger home and bought a new car. Mr. Tan held credit cards with eight banks and spent more than 5000 monthly on entertainment, fine dining and shopping. He did not keep track of his spending and often wrote over his credit card payments. When the recession hit in 2002, Mr. Tan's company downsized and he was retrenched. Although he was jobless, Mr. Tan continued to chalk up debts on his credit cards and paid only the minimum sum each month. A year after losing his job, he lost his savings ran out and he had difficulty servicing his credit card payments and other loans. Mr. Tan's house and car were repossessed and he was eventually forced to declare bankruptcy. And this is very real. You know? And I believe that you know, this time, if there is indeed a crisis, many, many will be hit. And I can tell you right, that <laughs> the fillers is such that many, 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 many Singaporeans are deeply involved. Okay. You can earn a 3,000 salary, you can have a $8,000 loan. Right. That's not new. Okay. And thinking that you can have a rental income that come out of it, but 
it didn't materialize. The rental didn't come. Okay. And then what happened? Then the value fall, the interest rate rise, and the stress comes. And it's most unbearable, you know. And so the Lord tells us to be careful. Right? Uh, but ye have not so learned Christ. Christ's ways is not like that, you see. Paul is saying, God's way is not man's way. God did not teach us to be greedy and last after the things of this world. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moss and dust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust doth corrupt, nor thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye, and if therefore the eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, Jesus says, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor what yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they rip nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth. You see, it's not easy to learn the lesson of faith, you know. Faith has to be practiced. Faith has to be practiced. You must be willing to stick it out with God, you know. When Jesus says this, uh, you must be willing to stick it out. It means that you know that you are without, you don't have a plan B. Right? You only have one plan, that is to follow the law. No plan B. Okay? And the Lord says what? Even the, 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 the grass of the field, God does clothe. Right? And he, why are you so of so little faith? Right? Take no thought. What? Ye shall eat what ye shall drink, wherewith shall we be clothed? For after these things to the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. As one pastor puts it very well, we believe God is all-knowing and all-powerful. He knows our need and is able to supply all our need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Sadly, many Christians are seeking their own way and all too often it is the worldly way to meet their needs they then find to their great loss that living outside God's law has dire consequences. When the layman brothers went into liquidation in 2008, many Singaporeans lost their money. It, is, it was heart-rending to read of ordinary folks who lost their hard-earned money and of many others, their retirement savings simply because they had not bought mini bonds to the link they have bought mini bonds linked to layman brothers at the point of purchase they had been painted a rosy picture by their bankers layman they were told was an american investment bank with a gilded credit rating the return they will be promised they, they were promised to be good but when Lehman collapsed, their hopes and dreams were dashed. Many investors could not even get back a cent to, on the sums they had paid for the bonds. Many people who were burned by this experience. 
There are two groups of people, those who invested and suffered loss and those who have not invested and have their money still intact in the bank. Indeed, I will venture to say that even if you are not in financial straits but us, nonetheless facing some form of crisis, seek biblical principles for your financial management. The reason is simple. There is only one answer to all of life's problems. Jesus is the only way. Yesterday, today, forever. All Christians are directed to the Lord Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. So every Christian should have a God-centered attitude towards the thing of this, things of this world. Paul says, godliness with contentment is great gain. No? And he quoted Matthew Henry, godliness is itself great gain. It is profitable to all things, and wherever there is true godliness, there will be contentment. But those who have arrived at the highest pitch of contentment with their godliness are certainly the happiest people in this world. If you have faith, you have contentment. Right? The psalmist says, a little that a righteous man has is better than the richest of many wicked. So this is a, a holy life, a life consecrated to God. We don't go after the things of this world anymore. Right? You know that they will burn, you get burned. Right? And secondly, a purchase people in intimate fellowship with the living and true God. If so be that ye have heard him and have thought of him as the truth is in Jesus, then you put off the former conversation of the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. So put off once and for all, all the personal actions to put off sin. And the word to put on is a once for all for, of, of a personal action to put on holiness. Right? Do not let the sins of the old man plague your new life. Okay? Like the putting off of a soiled garment. garment eh? Of sin and lust, we put on the fresh, clean garment of holiness and faith. Uh, there was a brother who called me and said, Can I speak to you just a moment? He says, I feel myself so dirty and filthy because I realize that I can sin so easily. I feel so ashamed of myself. I feel so discouraged also. Uh, but we have to realize that we cannot escape from the flesh right? as it is our very self. Right? We may be able to escape from the world by changing our environment, but we cannot escape from ourselves. Right? We have to know how to deal with the works of the flesh. Right? This old man that is inside us right? must be put down, killed, destroyed. Because it will, right? if not it will, it will affect our spiritual life. So it's so important right, that we be very gracious to make sure right, that we are able right, to take down this sinful flesh. Right? And you know, those who indulge in the works of the flesh you find that there is no joy in their hearts. They feel miserable. Right? We cannot bear spiritual fruit by indulging ourselves in the flesh. And therefore, we have to watch the flesh. Right? E-S-H, yeah? the, the, the word there. Understand the motion of sin that is in us and that we are dealing with a subject of vital importance and interest for every believer. Right? There are many believers who may be living believers for 20, 30 years and yet exhibiting the carnality that is described. Right? Why like that? Well, because we have not been taking time to mortify the flesh. Right? And the flesh usually uh, reels its ugly head. And so the Lord Paul is saying to us that there is these two natures that is going on inside us. And we must be careful. Right? Do not let it overcome us. Right? And uh, 
And, but if we were to trust the Lord, look to Him, cry out to Jesus, He is going to give us the strength to escape every temptation. And He's going to provide us the way out and also the way ahead. So, a changed man. That's what God had done for us. Okay, Paul tells us, a changed life. Right? A changed man must be accompanied by a changed life. And so we would carry on further next week as we uh, seek God instruction in his word let us pray father we want to thank thee for thy word thank thee for thy mercy in uh, uh, leading us through this adult sunday school class lord i pray that our uh, indeed uh, mature us in the things of god as we take time to imbibe thy truth in our lives this i pray with thanksgiving in jesus name amen